good to see you. Good to see you. How are you today? Good to see you. Where are you in the world? I'm I'm in India. In India? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> are you doing great out there? Oh yeah. Everything's good. <laughs> okay, nice to hear. So how's it going? Hey guys. Hey Ooh. sir. Good to see you, gentlemen. Good to see you, sir. How are you today? I'm very good, actually. Thank you very much for asking. So, so are you joining the video or is it just an audio? Um, you, can you, you can only hear me? Is that how it yes, is? Yes, I cannot see you yet. Oh, my God. It's in the left corn, corner, sir. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so, how are you guys today? How's the day so far? Oh, it's fine. I have a, a quiet day, so I'm uh, I'm just taking care of business. You know, the he's answering emails and talking to you and stuff like that. So sounds, sounds good. Sounds good. So, guys, your fourth album, Free Wheeler, is scheduled to be released on November 12th. So, can you tell me a bit about the songwriting and the production behind this album? Yes. You want to start, Mika? Yeah. Well. As it's obvious, I think from some of the lyric, it was recorded during uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So there are some lyrics that has changed in the band compared to earlier. And also there is a development in the way Sir and I write songs. It has developed in a more, dare we say, commercial way. <laughs> <laughs> I think our manager, he called it contemporary. That's what he said. It's a bit oh, more. Oh, it's a better word. <laughs> contemporary. That is. That's. He, he calls it more radio friendly, whatever that means. <laughs> that was good. And uh, yeah. had the had the opportunity to listen to the album in complete. And I believe this album is really amazing to listen to. A great hard rock album from you guys again. It's totally thank rocking. You. So thank you so much for that. So is there any particular concept that you put behind this album? I think one of the key words uh, is energy. Because I don't know what it is about g getting older, but this is my kind of um, Red Bull uh, boost in my life. That's electric guitars. That's the most kind of energetic project I, I have. And Mika and I, we'd like to give it full on when we're on stage. So I think there's a lot of energy on this album. A lot. <laughs> we recorded the fastest song we ever recorded, which is Dopamine, the opening song, yeah. the first single. And I think we, our arms and our brains were damaged for two days after that recording <laughs> because it's so fast. <laughs> But you know how it is when you try to overthink too much when you do music. If you try to make a hit song, you will never get a hit song. If you try to get on the radio, you will never get on the radio. So we just, I think we just put our heads together and we were literally saying, now fuck everybody else. Let's just do what we want to do. Don't think about any radio or any, you know, future plans. Let's just record what we would like to do. And maybe that's what you can hear. I don't know. <laughs> Wonderful. Sir. And uh, you guys have any touring plan scheduled for you from the release of this particular album? Yeah, we're going on tour in next month for two months in Denmark and Sweden as well. So uh, we're going to play, uh, I don't know how long, how long is it, Sean? 20 gigs? 20, it's, it's 20 shows in Denmark, yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And do uh, any plans on November 12th on the day of the release? Say that again, I'm sorry. Do you have any plans on the day of the release of this album? <laughs> Biggest party ever. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So you got the, the cover art of the album is quite interesting. You both were on the cover art with on the motorcycle. So what was the idea behind that particular cover art? What? We made three albums, which, you know, I don't know if you've seen them with, you know, with the faces of Soren and I, and it was like a, what is it called? A three ocularly, you know, where like you have three albums? Yeah. Yeah, it's a trilogy. Triology, that's the word. 
so it's nice to finish that and move on and do something completely different. And you know, there is a history, you know, from Kiss and other hard rock bands where they do yeah. this kind of, and we all, you know, we love all that old stuff as well. So it's nice to going in a new direction. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, in the last, the album Rock and Roll Radio, you guys worked with members of the band DAD, and it was like a huge success for you. And it was an amazing album from you guys. So, how it was like working with those people? They are they are kind of our big brothers, if that makes sense. You know, they they are they are very close friends of the band, and I think every Danish rock band knows their legacy and have that kind of respect for the Benson brothers. No other band from Denmark have done what they what they have have achieved. So that was a a step closer to to the success of a rock band just to have them around as co-writers and you know producers and stuff. So that was really nice. But for some reason we were Mika and I were totally we totally agreed on that we could do this album on our own without a producer or any guests, just yeah. the four of us in the studio. And I love the album when I, when I listen to it. I really like it. So I'm happy. Wonderful. And that's important. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. And uh, how has the journey for you both been so far? Uh, sorry, again? The musical journey for you both. How has that been so far? With the with the electric guitars from the we started, yeah, yeah, it's it's about ten years ago now. It's next year, I think it will be our ten years. We, we That's played right. Together. Yeah, so we it has developed from a side project where we just had a little fun making a record, playing some gigs, and now you know we are playing with, as you said, the DAD brothers have helped us and Santa Salamunsen, which is a uh, maybe the female DAD in Denmark, she's like a legend. We play with her and so it has, you know, developed into something completely not a side project anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a big um it's a it's a big part of our lives. Is that how to say it, Nika? That it, it yeah. really takes up a lot of space in our heads. And uh, electric guitars is like very a huge success in Denmark and slowly de coming around the world. So how do you feel about the success and how do you feel about it? Well, I say I think it's fantastic that a, a person like you can can pick it up and actually show interest in 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 our little band. And yesterday I had an email from a German promoter who who's interested in a European tour. So if we can find a slot later next year i would love to do that you know go out on a real tour with this band would be amazing so i think mika feels the same that that it's it's incredible when you reach out of your own country that's that's a that's such a huge uh how can i say that i'm really thankful that we nowadays have all these digital channels so 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 it's easier to to reach a, a far away target and You'll never know. America would be amazing. South America would even be better. Anything goes would would be fantastic for this band. Would love. To. I agree never... with everything, Sun says. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a thing that you should also know that we, we never changed any members in the band. We have the same sound engineer and the same drummer and the same bass player for ten years. So so it's a little family. We share so much outside the music together. So. It would really be a dream for me to go out with the boys and kill. I would love it. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And uh, would you like to share some of the great moments that you guys had over the years? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I would say that uh, we have supported for Deep Purple a couple of times. And, you know, have the guys from Deep Purple coming up and saying, your band name is Electric Guitars. Why didn't anybody else come up with that name? That was a big one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> that's been some great moments, that's for sure. Absolutely. We, um, 
Uh, do you remember, Mika, when we played Tivoli with uh, Marianne Elvid? She's not the prime minister, oh, but yeah, she was yeah. um, she, a high-rated politician. Now she was a mini- minister in Denmark. He was, that's right. <laughs> she was there. That was crazy. We also we played for the Crown Prince at a, at a huge military stadium. That was amazing, too. We, we've been through some, some crazy stuff here. The morning TV, when we played 104 decibel power metal, in, in morning TV, that was good. <laughs> the good one as well. And when the singer from uh, "I'm the One Who Wants to yeah. Be," with... oh yeah, Eric Martin, yeah, Eric Martin, he went to a concert and we didn't know. And Søren was playing with him a couple of weeks later because he was in Denmark and they should go to Faroe Fair, Island. Fair, yeah, Faroe Island. Yeah. And then he was singing one of our songs to Søren. That was like, <laughs> oh. yeah. <laughs> I really like that rock and roll radio. Okay, you know, that was that was crazy. So, what would be the next plans for you guys? <laughs> Have you any ideas, Mika? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's it's scheduled right now for us to play for two months now, and then next year we go on a tour with the uh, San Jose Motion, which is you know the legend. Everything and then it's summertime in Denmark. The festivals are there. Let's see what happens. You never know. Yeah, we we definitely want to do as many gigs as possible, and we know that the summer shows are coming in in Denmark right now. But but I I definitely need to speak to to that German promoter who emailed me yesterday that that if we could fill in a few Dutch or German festivals, you know that would be great. I would love that. <laughs> I would love that. Wonderful, and you also have worked with Mike Tram. So how it was like working along with him? Yeah, we both uh, we both played a tour with Mike, uh, and I think Mika agrees. He's most he's probably the most loving, heartwarming, friendly rock star out of the business. Uh, he's very professional. He's very um, fo- focused on his on his uh, on his playing and his singing. But touring with Mike is, it's amazing. He takes care of us. And I think you had the same experience, Mika. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's like family you didn't have before you met him. Oh, I don't, I can't. It's true what Son says. And he's such a team player, you know. Yeah. I think he has tried it all, you know, had the world hit and everything. And he's very relaxed in it. He's, he's not uh, up there. He's. Yeah, he doesn't blow his trumpet. That's how to say it. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, guys, what would be the dreams for you? Um, The the big shows outside of Denmark, that would be super cool if we could somehow go on a bigger tour with a band, you know, that we talked about that so many times that, you know, we have an opening gig for Aerosmith in June. Mm-hmm. And if that works out, well, how crazy would it be to, to go on a tour and opening up for a band like Aerosmith? You know, we, we have that one show and we're going to do another one for Status Quo, opening up for them. And that, when I read the books, all the um, biographies, that's how you break a band. That's how it works. It's when the Black Crows are opening up for ZZ Top. That's where they started to, you know, get a huge audience. And I just, I think Mika and I, we talked about it so many times that 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 should be the next level for the band to find a way to go out on tour with Rival Sons or whatever. Wonderful. And uh, talking about electric guitars, you guys are making amazing music, bringing back the old, good old classic rock era back on scene so it's really a wonderful thing where a lot of bands are coming up with new things and uh, it's totally not sometimes it didn't do not go along into the head of the 80s and sound is metalheads or rock rock fans so when you guys make things like that it definitely gets into the head and you really go rock along with the song so you guys are doing it and tremendous job and making amazing music so how as a band do you feel about what you guys were doing well, we do what we, you know, as John said in the beginning, we, we really don't care about what the radio channel says. We are, people say you should do this. 
this started as a hobby project because we wanted to do, you know, music in in this kind of genre. And so we, it's natural for us to, to do that. It's not, uh, it's, we don't really think about, oh, we have to, we just play the music that we dreamed about playing and that, yeah, it's, it's like, I think it's like rival sons. They do what they do. They don't, that's just how they sound. What would you say, John? I, I also agree on what Mika says that because we work as session musicians, both Mika and I, we do a lot of session work where we sign up for a tour with a pop artist or a roots artist or producing, you know, different kinds of music. But this is about guitar, pure, simple rock and roll. Doesn't have to be fancy or doesn't have to be, you know, innovative or anything. It's, it's just about the energy and playing guitar as loud as possible, <laughs> you know. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. And how did you both come up with the name Electric Guitars? <laughs> <laughs> ah, I think it was a bass player. <laughs> I'm happy he didn't call it the electric bass guitar. <laughs> he just, I think he looked at us and because we were looking for a name and should we call it Anderson Van Ball Project or, and he just said, guys, this is not a jazz or fusion project. Just call it what it is, electric guitars. And we said, okay. <laughs> 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 wonderful, wonderful. And like you said, you want to get out of Denmark and play in other countries. But is there any specific countries that is always in your heart that you really want to go out there and play for the fans out there? Um, I would say that the United States is my big one. Sean has played there with Glenn Hughes. I played shows in the States. Actually, Electric Guitars has played at some shows in the States as well. We played the whiskey and... And we played at the NAMM show just to tick the boxes. But yeah, America, wow, that would be nice. Wonderful. And wonderful. South America, woo. <laughs> awesome. And uh, in the future, if you want to do something different from what you are actually doing now, is there, what would that be? I think we both have a, a dream of, um, you know, that thing where we, are backing up uh, solo artists. I think we both have a, have a dream of doing something big with that, you know. Where is, um, would Eric Martin be up for that? You know, do a, a tour with us as a band mm -hmm. or, you know, any rock singers that work as solo artists. If, I, if, we, if we could get, you know, get in touch with some of those legendary singers and, you know, Jolyn Turner or whatever, just one of those cool old rockers and do, do a project with that. I think that would be pretty cool to do that as well outside of Denmark because it works very well when we do it here with Sene or uh, we have another guy called Tim Christensen. We did a show with him. Uh, we did it with Jesper Binza, of course, from DAD. So, you know, a, a, a huge international name with us as a backing band. I think that would be it. A great experience. Wonderful, wonderful. And guys, so uh, finally, what would be the message that you want to give to your fans around the world? Rock on. What's the... <laughs> <laughs> um, the message would be support live music. Um, let's get over this COVID shit in a hurry. Let's just get over it and get back out there and buy tickets and come out and have a party with us because, you know, that's, I think after this pandemic, I think more than ever, I think now it's clear that the music doesn't exist without the audience. It, it doesn't make any difference if there's no audience. So we really want to see the, the fans out there again, coming out and, and, you know, move on with their lives and, and continue the, the path of rock and roll because it's still there. We know it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Mika and Soren, thank you so much for giving me your time to talk to you today. It's really a pleasure and honor for me to talk to you guys. Likewise. And 
Thank you so much for making amazing music and looking forward to the new album on November 12th. Thank you so much for that. And you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye.